Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Are You a Target for the Enemy? Are You a Target for the Enemy? Whoever that enemy might be, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, the enemy seeks those who are vulnerable, who are weak, those who are unspiritual as well as spiritual. The enemy seeks to play on any and everything that you are willing to give. The enemy could very well be among you. And so today's message I bring to you those that are lonely, lost, and wish to be loved. Once again, these individuals who I am speaking of are those who are lonely, lost, and have a need to be loved. The enemy prays, P-R-E-Y-S, while the Christian prays, P-R-A-Y-S. And while the Christian prays for someone, someone who is trustworthy, someone who just might love them unconditionally, someone who will do something for them, whatever it is that they need, praying that God will Move on someone's spirit. While they are asking the Lord for many things, the enemy is watching. And he is waiting for the opportunity for the Christian to give him or her the right information so that he can find a place in his or her atmosphere, household, whether on the computer or off the computer. Any place that the Christian opens up his or her heart, mind, physical space, what have you. This is why we are to guard our hearts and not let everyone know what is going on with everything about us, especially during vulnerable periods of our lives. Some are listening carefully to our conversations. And they are hoping to get some information that will give them an opportunity to so-called help us. The children of light, the children of light, they look for opportunities to best serve others. But they're not looking for anything in return. Unless, of course, there is a pressing need, but typically that child of light, he or she is well-meaning. But the child of darkness, well, when he or she's looking for friendship, connection, partnership, opportunity, what have you, he or she is looking for what benefits him or her. How is this person or group going to help us? How is he or she going to make things easier for us? You know, we have this thing. We have that thing. We want this done. We want that done. We need so-and-so in our lives. But how do we get so-and-so? To open up his or her door or heart or what have you. Or give us access to that thing that they have or those people. This is what children of darkness are looking for. Their own breakthrough. A breakthrough that's wrapped up in physical things. In material wealth. In service to them. And only them, because many children of darkness are selfish, and they are also jealous types as well. Let us think of an example where an individual, whether it's male or female, is on the Internet looking for some comfort, looking for somebody who's going to befriend them. And then hopefully, at least they think, they're going to get something out the deal, right? And this individual, let's say that he or she just lost, lost a lot, whether it was money or they broke up with someone, a death in a family, 
some type of health ailment, or just simply lonely. So they're hoping to gain something from an internet romance. And they're looking and they're looking and, they, and they're looking some more. And then finally they come across someone who is going to benefit them. At least so they think. They're not thinking about anything more than their own personal needs. But this individual who comes into play, well, he or she is listening for some key words. Some key words that's going to make him or her look like a savior. And those key words are, I'm lonely. You know, I mean, I've been at this thing for so long. Oh, I understand. I'm lonely too. You know, I recently got out of a crazy relationship, you know, and I'm just looking for that right one. I hear you. And hopefully I'll be that right one. You know, I've spent a lot of years being around some folks that just didn't make me feel loved. They didn't make me feel special. You know, I like to be spoiled. Yes, well, I'm just the one that can do that for you. Of course, you know. There's always something that you got to give up in order to get a little something right. And I'm sure we can both agree on that. You see where I'm going with this. Okay, now take that example and apply it to some area of your life where there's somebody just lingering in the background that you're not 100% convinced he or she is truly a child of God. One who has come into your life with a sincere heart, mind, truthful, honest, loving, caring, uh, you got your doubts, right? Something isn't quite right. You've got to discern whether a person is of light or darkness, and you're not going to be able to do that if you are in darkness with them physically as well as spiritually. I'm not going to be able to discern too much if we're in a dimly lit restaurant atmosphere and everything is perfect. I'm not going to be able to discern too much if I'm in the room in the dark with them doing a little bit of this and that. I'm not going to be able to discern too much when all of what's coming out their mouth are things to play on my weaknesses so that we're having dark conversation, right? I'm not going to be able to discern too much if there's a lot of making now in a dark car. How am I going to be able to determine whether or not this person is of light when I'm so distracted by the darkness? Have you ever walked into a dark room and stumbled over some things because you couldn't see? Well, those that are on many, many different websites looking for that partner, that's what they're doing. They're stumbling around in darkness for those that are Connecting with all sorts of people because they're hoping to gain some money, gain some opportunity. And that's all they can see. They're stumbling in darkness. God is nowhere in their plans. When you sit down and talk with some of these individuals, they'll tell you quite simply, I believe that I know what I'm doing. And I don't need you to tell me too much of anything. I believe that where I'm headed is good. I mean, I've seen many people do the same thing and well, nothing bad happened to them. So I feel like, hey, you know, I can take a risk. Hey, I'm a risk taker, you see. And so we try to warn them, uh oh, dangerous curve ahead. Be careful. Watch where you're going. And sometimes people will accept your warnings to a certain extent. Because, well, of course, there's some benefit, right? There's some benefit to befriending you. You're a nice person. You're sweet. You're kind. You may have even hooked them up with some money, helped them out with a few things. So they'll keep you around until your warnings start offending, until you start coming around a little too often trying to save them from themselves or from someone or something. Uh-oh, you're, you're just getting on my nerves a bit. You know, some people will say things like, save that drama for your mama. Well, guess what? Some mamas ain't interested in your drama. Okay? Some mamas aren't even around anymore to hear their daughter or son's drama. So then what does one do when he or she keeps falling into some type of problem 
and they're looking for a solution and mama don't want to listen anymore and folks that once listened are no longer around what now well i can direct you to war god if you're interested i can tell you that god was there and continues to be there when no one else i can tell you that i took some time out to pray behind closed doors over and over and over again whether i was in the bathroom on a job or whether i was at home trying to put my clothes on i was praying to this god that the christians kept telling me about and i was asking him a number of things and do you know he actually came through and even during times where i thought no he's not listening upon closer inspection i realized that he was and so that loneliness that i was feeling that i didn't mind telling a few folks back in the day about who actually took advantage of that loneliness and that loss that i had experienced here, there, and everywhere that I want shared with other folks. And then that feeling of wanting to be loved. Well, all of those things, they slowly but surely faded away and they didn't become so important or they weren't as important as they once were, you see. But for the young person who hasn't experienced much in life and then you start seeing a bunch of things that are negative that keep coming around and showing up and robbing you of what little bit of happiness that you have. Loneliness is big on the list when it comes to dating and loss is a big deal when you need a bit of distraction and feeling unloved. Well, that means a whole lot when family and friends have forsaken you. Yes, I get you. I feel you. But what I'm trying to tell so many people is that you got to stop putting so much out there on your blogs and on your social media sites and so forth. That show just how lonely and lost and unloved and confused you are. You see, when I speak of things, I speak of past issues. I'm not speaking of current issues. I'm speaking of past stories and how God took me and turned me around. I'm not speaking of current things. So when someone who is trying to pray, P-R-E-Y, on myself as well as others they become disappointed because they realize this woman <laughs> she don't have those type of issues where did i get that information oh i didn't realize the copyright on the book or i didn't pay close attention to the story she told that happened in 19 whatever and so then they move on to their next potential victim Children of darkness, they become irritated with you when you start talking about your network of friends. And even if you don't have a network, it's okay to talk about a network that's unseen. That network called uh, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You don't need to call them out by name, but you do have a network. And they don't need to know that right now you're going through some things and you don't necessarily have a human network. Because see, what you do is you give place to the enemy when you start talking about, like I said earlier, how lonely you are and how much loss you experience and how you want to be loved. You become a target for the enemy. Children of darkness become angry. And they're not interested in you any longer when you don't show that you need them. Why would someone become so angry and irritated and patient and uh, even emotionally abusive? Why would somebody be calling you up so often, asking you so many questions about what you need and what you want? Are they really being nice? Are they really being helpful? Or are they really secretly trying to get an in on you so that they can control you? You see, if I have enough information about you and what your weaknesses are, I can be able to control you. I can be able to tell you that you need me. I did an audio years back about that one who says, I'm all you got. Of course, he's going to paint that picture because he doesn't want his narcissistic supply. Right. What feeds his selfish desires. He doesn't want it walking out the door. He doesn't want his buddy or his girlfriend or wife or what have you that he has used and abused and so forth to get away. You can't go. You got to stay here. 
I need you. I want you. I want to keep you around. You're good for me. Don't you realize that? But is he or she good for you? Are you getting something out of the relationship that's emotionally and physically satisfying? Or is it one-sided? I think of an individual who gave so much of herself so soon and wanted so much in return and got nothing. Drama and more drama is what she got. And I prayed with her and I just wanted God to just change her mindset. God, could you just change her mindset? Could you just tell her that what she's doing is so messed up? Could you? Because she's not listening. And I don't want to hurt her feelings by saying it like that. So God, and sometimes we've got to pray for our family members and friends that they will stop putting their heart out there like that. Because they are being hurt over and over again. And some men and women have, abusive men and women, have gotten away with this sort of behavior for a long time. They got away with it because the folks around them are used to it. Because mama and daddy did it to them. They got away with it because folks didn't want to see beyond the material. Oh, you know, it's kind of hard to see someone being abusive when you're driving <laughs> in a sports car that they bought for you. Or you're wearing Prada and Coach and Louis Vuitton and any number of things. It's kind of hard to see just how emotionally abusive they are when you are dependent on them. When they have your heart in their hands. When they're squeezing the very life out of you through their emotionally abusive things that they say. And do you really believe that God called you to those sorts of relationships? Well, the healthy minded knows full well that that's all wrong. And they distance themselves from that sort of thing. But the dysfunctional makes excuses and lies and covers up and comes up with all sorts of blame and shame on others and not on the one that's abusing them. That enemy that is behind the enemy. They don't even believe that Satan can influence people. And some folks don't even want to admit that there's evil forces at work in and around them. And others, well, they're too blind to see for the reasons that I indicated earlier. Some are so caught up in sex and material wealth and what I can get, what I can get, that when God himself even shows these individuals what is so wrong, they don't want to see it. Get away from me, believer. Your light is shining on my personal life. Stay out my business. I'm tired of you. You see? And that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to push as many healthy, functional people away and bring folks to us or back into our lives that are dysfunctional so that he can work his mess all over again. Just when you got free, sister, brother in Christ, from that one, he or she drew you back in. Through all sorts of promises or sex or material wealth or whatever it was, they met your need once again because you put your business out in the street. There's some business that no, we cannot talk to people about. We just can't. And it doesn't make us bad people for doing it. It's just that we can't because we can't trust everyone. I'm discerning whether you are a child of light or a child of darkness. I'm discerning whether or not God is really moving you to speak the kind of words over my life. I'm just trying to determine whether or not this person is a person that I can really connect with. Somebody that is, you know, going to uh, help me and I help them. You see, it's a two-way relationship. It's never one-sided. When it's about God's business. I'm telling you from personal experience. A quality relationship. You get something. And I get something. 
A dysfunctional relationship is that one who's constantly moving and grooving and working and doing everything for the other one. While he sits back or she sits back and enjoys a lot, a whole lot. How long do we have to continue to help somebody because they did this for me and they did that for me. And so therefore, I feel like I got to keep doing for them. But th isn't there some type of point where you can sit back sometimes and just relax and enjoy your life? Your life, right? Some folks, they are so caught up in their partner's life, their boss's life, what their needs are, what their wants are. And they don't bother to even think twice about their own needs. Meanwhile, their health is failing them. Meanwhile, they've got children that they don't even tend to because they're too busy, wrapped up in that one who feeds off of them like a parasite, who puts them to work like a slave, who tells them that they love when they really just like, oh, you're okay, you're all right with me. I don't even know what love is. <laughs> you see, that's who some of these people are. And the enemy gets a kick out of preying on some of the most vulnerable of our society, weak women and children who don't know better, Senior citizens who are slowly but surely losing their minds, as well as men who have experienced repeated losses. They get enslaved in traps. Money traps. Abusive traps. Any type of trap that the enemy can place them into. Like trying to get a mouse with cheese on a trap. Children of darkness are always looking for what benefits them. Children of light look for how to best serve others. Most often without expecting anything in return unless there is a pressing need. Don't be anyone's fool. Saint as well as sinner. Accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and allow the Holy Spirit to move on you long enough so that you can be able to get something done. Whatever that is that you have been pondering, uh, you might have gotten a fleeting thought, but get something done to keep predators away from you and your family. To build up your self-esteem once again, wife who is caught up in an emotionally abusive and or physically abusive relationship. To have some backbone once again, to be that independent one that gets out there and does some things to help others before you close your eyes. For that man who is in a tired relationship, a... <sighs> Relationship where you want to go on the other side of the house and stay away from that one that you live with. You are going to need to establish some type of boundaries, some type of schedule for yourself that can emotionally as well as physically satisfy you in a healthy way. And you can do that by number one, choosing your entertainment wisely. And that entertainment could very well be the thing that keeps you emotionally uh, charged at times. Possibly abusive. Be mindful of what is permeating, permeating your ear. What is in front of your eyes. Who is putting stuff inside your mindset that drains you? Some people are in relationships that are emotionally and physically draining. They think it's everybody else. Then once you cut off everybody else, you realize it's the person that you're living with that's draining you of all of your energy. But I love this person. Well, then what you do is you figure out a way where you two are doing something other than talking to each other. <laughs> Real simple, other than sexing each other. Get out the atmosphere. That's boring you to death. Literally, some people are headed to their graves faster because they're bored to death. They don't do anything but sit in front of electronics most of the day. 
and talk about folks. That's no way to live. That's no way to live when you don't want that type of lifestyle anyway. When you often complain. When you don't like what's going on. No wonder some are so lonely. No wonder some can't handle loss. And no wonder some don't feel loved. If I'm not out here loving, if I'm not out here doing the types of things so that I can get over losses, if I'm constantly feeling lonely, even in a relationship, there's something wrong with me. Let's take accountability for ourselves, shall we? But when you got a network and when you no longer feel lonely and when you are no longer dwelling in those losses and when you got some folks that genuinely love and care about you, that predator has to walk. That predator is going to have to figure out how to do something with his or her life because you're moving and you're doing what it is that Jesus was doing when he walked this planet. He was about getting out there and talking to people, whether on the internet or off the internet these days, we have choices. We got vehicles. We got things that Jesus didn't have in his day. He didn't have a phone. He didn't have cars. He didn't have planes and trains and buses. He didn't have any of that. But the man wasn't about to lose his mind thinking about what his calling was by sitting around. He got among some folks and he started teaching them. And some of you seniors, I'm telling you, you need to be speaking to the young people who are lost rather than complaining about them or badmouthing them or talking about what they should be doing for you. Your job is to be out there speaking to the people about the things that you have experienced and how you got over and how God gave you the victory. Why is it that folks are spending so much time being ugly, being critical, and then they want God to move on some folks to come back into their lives? <laughs> That's not happening. Not anytime too soon. Come on now. Let's not be fools about these things. Let's be wise. Let's be generous. Let's be kind. Let's be polite. Let us go and do some things for those individuals who appreciate, who love, and who desire to be loved. But let us not take people's weaknesses and use them and abuse them. And some people have done just that. Confess your sin and repent for taking advantage of folks. When they needed you, when they wanted you to come around, when they wanted you to be there for them. When they were down and out, some folks took advantage of those folks during tough times in their lives. They expected money from them. They expected them to be servants to them. They had hidden motives, ulterior motives. They were like hustlers, pimps and players in their mindset. What can you do for me? What's the benefit? And some folks were expecting people to be servants to them because they did a little bit of this and that over and over again. And sometimes God isn't going to use that same person that you were blessing to bless you. He'll use other people. So stop putting pressure, some of you mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, on these children thinking that because you did so much for these children, they're supposed to do for you. There are other folks that God can raise up to do for you. And it doesn't mean that, oh, yeah, that's right, because my child is no good, or my child shoulda, coulda, woulda. No, that is because God in all his grace and all his mercy is doing what he is doing. And some folks don't deserve any of it. They don't. But they have gotten unmerited favor. And some folks have gotten what they have gotten because years ago people prayed for them because they saw what was coming. And some people are better people because folks are not in their lives. And sometimes that's what it takes. Because sometimes we cannot be moved spiritually to do too much of anything when we're in comfort zones. 
when we are around people that, oh, I'm used to you. I'm okay with you, right? Whether family members or friends. But then you're not doing anything for anybody else, you see. So God will set it up so that we move out of the way as family members and friends so that that individual that he wants, who he has called, who he has chosen, can be blessed, can learn some life lessons, can turn from their wicked ways. And sometimes we are blocking God from moving. So step out the way and allow God to move on those individuals. Don't be the predator and don't be the victim either. Well, I thank you so much for listening. Please do check the description box for anything related to your situation. If you haven't given, please do give. And you have been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Please do subscribe today. To God be the glory.